Uh, hello again, Algebra 2 students. This is my second greeting of the day. Um, producing a video right now for you guys for the questions that you asked about assignments 80 and 81, which were questions from uh, section 5 about um, solving roots, square roots, and other rational expressions. Uh, the other assignments aren't completely due yet, so I'm kind of waiting on that, but this should clear some things up for some of you that were having trouble with some of the issues. And this also, uh, I believe, covers your, your questions you've been asking on the other things, uh, too. So here, first of all, something like this. You've got a fractional exponent, so you need to do both sides times the reciprocal of that fraction. Okay, so 9 to the 3 halves power. So when we have this, we have x plus 2 because the fractions really canceled each other out. Index and then power. So this would really be 3 cubed equals x plus 2. So x would equal x plus 2 would equal 27 when you multiply that out. So x is 25. Okay? So remember, you're looking for that uh, just reciprocal of the fraction exponent. But this one has the other thing happening first, is that you have to divide by 3 first. So that before you even begin to deal with that, you have to make sure you've isolated the part of the equation that has the fraction exponent to start with. So when you do this, then you'll flip this over and take it to the uh, reciprocal power on both sides, just like you did on that one. All right, this one's the same issue, except for that you have to isolate this expression first. So to do that, you'll take away 3 from both sides. And that'll give you an 8 over here and a 4 minus x to the 3 halves power here. So once again, you're taking a power to a power. So you're going to multiply times the reciprocal, 2 thirds power. And then don't forget when you are finishing this off, this is the, the cube root of 8 because the denominator becomes the index squared. So that's 2 squared, which is 4. So um, when we finish this off, we get we get 0. And then if you go back and you really think about this and you solve it, always remember you can plug back in just to check. 4 minus 0 would be 4. The square root of 4 is 2 cubed, which would be 8. 8 plus 3 is 11, so that one does check out. Uh, the next one someone had a question on was this word problem. They had gone through and they were talking about water flow and the speed of that water. So really this one was just saying, all right, they gave you a speed. Uh, it, really, when they do the word problems and they give you a formula, you just need to look in there to see what words go with the numbers. So it said the max flow was Q, and then later it said that Q was 30, so you'd plug in 30 here. Pi is always pi, 3.14. D is what you are asked to find. V is 400 divided by 4. Now let's talk about some of the algebra to solve it, because I don't know what your question was, uh, how to plug in or how to solve. So if we multiply both sides by 4, you get 120. And then you get 400 pi d squared. And we can divide both sides by 400 pi. Now, hopefully, you've all got your calculators. 
that you were supposed to have gotten earlier in the year or have found a good simulator. If you haven't, you can do it in more steps on a regular calculator, but on here, 120 divided by 400 pi. And point, sorry, point zero nine five five and then square root your answer and a good practical example of this. And so the square root of your answer, that's just easier. It's a little trick that you can do if you are using your calculator. So about 0.3 uh, would be the diameter for that. I'm going to move it right along. Let's take a look at these that some of you asked about. Once again, this is another take the reciprocal question. And so is this one. These are really actually almost exactly the same question, except for um, this one over here, you have to add the one over first. So I'm going to take a look at this one. Because they're really the same question with the same process, we'll look at the more complicated one. This one you have to add one to both sides. So then it looks just like this one except with a different thing in here. To undo the fraction exponent, you need to do the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1. So you end up with x plus 3 over here, but be careful with this one. x plus 1 squared, x plus 1 times x plus 1. So this is really helping you to answer both of these questions. x squared plus x plus x plus 1, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then when you finish solving this, you need to take this one, subtract from both sides. You need to take this one, subtract from both sides, so that you're left with 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. If we factor this thing out, uh, negative 2 and 1, or 2 and negative 1 actually give you this, so positive 2 and negative 1 will give you that 1 in the middle. So that would give you that x equals negative 2 or x equals 1. You should go back and check for extraneous solutions, so you would put this back in and make sure that it works. Uh, let's just do that really quickly here. I'll get rid of this. And so we're going to take a look for our extraneous roots here. Uh, negative 2 plus 3 to the 1 half power minus 1. And we are checking to see if that equals negative 2. Well, when we have here uh, negative 2, this would be 1 to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 1, which gives you 1 minus 1. That's 0. It's not negative 2. So this one is extraneous. This one does not work. Okay. However, let's check the other one. Let's check in with the 1. 1 plus 3 to the 1 half power minus 1. We're checking to see if that equals 1. So this would be 4 to the 1 half power. 4 is, square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 1 does equal 1. This checks out, so x equals 1 is your only solution. You're looking for your square roots for these. Okay, so this problem, 33 and 27 are really the exact same issues. So the people that had those questions, you do the same thing. It's just you'd have a different solving at the end for this. And so we have those things happening. I'm going to move right along and cut this out. We're going to move this up so I can have some room to work with it. Number 35. 
Number 35, in order to undo a square root, you square both sides. So we really have 3x equals x plus 6. So 2x equals 6, x equals 3. That's the only answer we're getting out of this one. So let's check it out just to make sure it works. And square root of 3 plus 6. This is the square root of 9, which is 3. This is also the square root of 9, which is 3. They equal each other. Uh, so this is my answer. This one's just easier than it looks, and I hope that helped you. All right, moving right along. This one actually and this one are close to being the same issue, but we'll go through both. Uh, first of all, you've got these two and a zero on the other side, but I want to show you a thing. If you add 9 plus 4x to the 1 half power to both sides, it's going to make things so much easier. Because when you do that, you're setting yourself up so that you can multiply times the reciprocal of the fraction, or take both sides to the power of the reciprocal of the fraction. And when you do that, to the 2 over 1 power, or to the second power, we're squaring both sides actually. What happens is that the uh, exponents cancel out, and you're left with 7x plus 6 equals 9 plus 4x. Again, this problem is not as hard as it looks. We can take 4x away from both sides, and then you can take away 6 from both sides. So x equals 1 and plug them back in just to check and make sure. So 7 times 1 plus 6 to the 1 half power. You're checking to see if we take that away. 9 plus 4 times 1 to the 1 half power. You're seeing does that equal 0. And as we go through and we do that, this would be uh, 13 to the 1 half power. Wow. But guess what? This is also 13 to the 1 half power. So I really don't even care how much 13 to the 1 half power is because when I subtract a number from itself, I get 0. And so it checks out, even though that 13 might have made you go, ah, I don't want that to be 13. All right, moving right along, let's do the same basic strategy for this one. Okay, x plus 5 to the 1 half. Notice, though, that this is 5 minus 2x to the 1 fourth. So this one does take a little bit more of thinking. Because when you are taking a look at this, we have a 1 half power and a 1 fourth power. So I could square both sides if I wanted to, reciprocal. But when I do times 2 over 1, that's not going to completely get rid of this fraction. But if I do times 4 over 1, in other words, do the reciprocal for the exponent and do 4 over 1 on both sides, because you're allowed to take both sides to the same power, what you'll notice is that not only does this one cancel out, OK, we left with 5 minus 2x, but this one almost cancels out. It's x plus 5 squared, because 1 half times 4 is 2. So then when we multiply this out, and I would suggest that if you're not real good with binomial squared yet, do that by hand on the side, x plus 5 times x plus 5. We're going to take away 5. We're going to add 2x, so we get this. And that'll give us 12x plus 20x squared. And then we want to look for factors of 20 that add together to give us 12. And that would be uh, 2 and 10.
So that would make our two answers x is negative 2 or x equals negative 10. You would possibly want to plug that into check. I'm out of space, so I'm going to get rid of this real quick. All right. Hope I don't need that again. And I'm going to do my check over here. So I'm going to try and see, first of all, if negative 2 plus 5 to the 1 half power minus 5 minus 2 times negative 2 to the 1 fourth power gives me this 0. So this is really 3 to the 1 half power. This is really 9 to the 1 fourth power. All right, well, that's an interesting thing to think about. And But if you can really think about it, this is 3 to the 1 half. 9 is 3 squared. Squared to the 1 fourth, it's a power to a power. So I have 3 to the 1 half minus 3 to the 1 half. This check got to be kind of challenging, but fun. So that one checks out. This is definitely an answer. I want to check to see if x, if the negative 10 will work. See if that's extraneous or not. So I'm going to try uh, negative 10 plus 5 to the 1 half power. I'm already having a problem with this one. Because when I take negative 10 plus 5 to the 1 half power, I'm getting negative 5 to the 1 half power, which is square root of negative 5. So already before I go anywhere else, I find out that I'm getting an imaginary number, so that doesn't work at all. So we can just knock that one out before we even get very far. So a couple of really cool, awesome things in that problem for number 39. Okay, let's take a look at this. Once again, you're going to isolate those variables just like we did before. We have, oops, it's a one-third. Sorry about that. So I'm going to take away my one first. I get five over here. Two, two x to the one-third power. We can divide by two. Oh no, we're going to have to do something with a fraction. Yeah, we will. 2x to the 1 3rd power equals 5 halves. And if we want to multiply times the reciprocal for that exponent, I get to the 3rd power. So I have 2x equals 125 over 8, and then I need to divide by 2, or I'm going to multiply times a half. So x equals 125 over 16. I'll tell you the cube root ones are a little bit less likely to provide an extraneous solution. What you can do is you can plug it back in just to make sure that that gives you the right answer. Let's move on to this one. Once again, you have to isolate your variable or isolate the thing that holds your variable. So we're going to take away 4 from both sides and get 32. This one's going to come out much friendlier. And then you need to divide both sides by 2. x minus 1 to the 4 thirds power equals 16. We need to do power to a power, so you're going to choose the reciprocal, 3 fourths, 3 fourths. So the fourth root of 16 is 2 to the third power. Remember, this is your index, this is your exponent. So x minus 1 equals 8, x equals 7, uh, sorry, x equals 9. So if you went back in here and you plug this in, uh, you'll find an answer very uh, nicely that will work for you because 9 minus 1 is 8. 
that would be 2 times 16, which would be 32 plus 4 equals 36. So you've got your answer that works out. Yes, I know I'm going fast, but a lot of times these homework questions are just to get you going. And um, you can always slow me down. I think you can even slow down my words on YouTube. That would be fun. Okay, so here we go. Now, uh, 59 was one of the things that said what's wrong with what the person did. Uh, find their error. The error was that they didn't check for extraneous solutions. So we want to check 4 and 1. Those were the two answers that they got. So when you check 4, I need to get the pencil function back. There we go. I check 4 and see if that equals 4. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yep, that one works out. A square root of 1 plus 2 equals 1, but no, it doesn't. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Nope, that one doesn't work. That one's extraneous. And so the person's error on that is that they did not check for extraneous solutions. And then finally, they asked you for uh, an equation involving radical expressions that wouldn't give you any real solution. So I have an example that I thought up uh, right here. And the reason that this one doesn't provide any rational solutions is because here, if we do the right work on this one, and we square both sides to get rid of the square root, sorry about that, we get x equals 2x plus 1. And we solve this by taking away x from both sides and then taking away 1 from both sides. We get x equals negative 1. And that's the only number we come up with. But when we try to check it, we get the square root of negative 1. That's not a real number. That's an imaginary number. So right, right there, it just falls apart completely. And that was the thing, is they wanted you to come up with a, an example like that on your own. So probably when you check the back of the book, it said answers vary, which is because there are a whole bunch that you could have come up with, but you might not have quite been understanding what they were asking for. The, some of those critical thinking questions are really good for you. But here's the example of one of the good answers. And so I really hope that this little extra video helped you. Uh, my intention has to been, been to do a lot more of them, but the number of hours in the day has made that really, really, really challenging. But uh, we're going to get this home learning thing. We're going to get this nailed down and then hopefully never, ever have to use it again in our lifetime. So we're going to pray to that ends, and I'm just going to finish this off with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, please, 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 Help everybody understand. I pray for those that are struggling in any way that you'll bless them and encourage them. I thank you, Lord, that this is not going to last forever. And I pray, Lord, that we'll never have to encounter it again. I pray that it will only be a memory. I pray for health and strength. I pray for people to uh, be protected from this virus and that you would bring healing to those family members and friends who need it. And I pray that you would touch the students in this class and that you'll help them. In Jesus' name, amen.